everybody, welcome back into the Colored Gemstone Academy. I am your instructor, Paul DC, and this is my YouTube channel, Paul DC Gemstones. Well, this week's lesson on gemstones is going to be lesson 64 and all about hematite. All right, sure, I know what you're thinking. Paul, what's with the outfit? Well, there's a story behind that. <laughs> Basically, this morning, I did the entire lesson and then uh, my wife and I decided to go out for happy hour. It's Friday here in the United States. And um, so we con continued to have happy hour. I came home, started to edit, and uh, no audio. No audio on the thing at all. So here I am, just as I was for happy hour, continuing. Happy hour, cheers. But this is going to be all about hematite. So what can I say about hematite? First of all, I think that this is one of those gemstones that's probably been under the radar for a lot of you. Maybe you don't know much about it, uh, but it's one of those, I think, really great underrated gemstones that is very affordable and really, really beautiful. So what is hematite? Hematite is a, an iron oxide mineral that has kind of a gray, silver to gray to even a black uh, look of, of color, but it's also iron oxide, which means that's the, the very definition of rust. So it has a lot of red tones that can be in that stone. In fact, I have some pieces, of course, I rated jewelry's, uh, Judy's jewelry box, and this is some hematite. When you look at the hematite, it really reminds me up close like this of almost like the look of a Tahitian pearl. The difference is you know right away it's not a Tahitian pearl because it feels a lot heavier than a pearl would feel. Well, there's a reason for that as well because hematite has the second highest specific gravity of any natural gemstone. Now, what's the specific gravity again? Specific gravity is the heft. How heavy does the stone feel for the size that it is? Well, this is uh, actually very second highest. It's a 5.26, I believe it is, on the specific gravity. The only thing that's higher is something called cassiterite. And cassiterite is tin oxide, this one being an iron oxide. And that uh, cassiterite is a 6.7 to 7.1. Now, to put this into perspective, we already talked about certain gems in the past, like uh, rubies and sapphires, that are a 4 on the specific gravity. Both of these that I've been talking about to consider right and more importantly your beautiful uh, hematite is uh, much higher than that 5.26 on that. So the bottom line and the reason you need to know about that specific gravity I think this is a beautiful gemstone I think it's one that you can wear in bracelets and, and necklaces, pendants um, and rings but as far as earrings, I'd probably shy away from that because the last thing that you want are things that are really heavy on your earlobe. So I would avoid that. And that's one of the reasons using that specific gravity number can help you make those kind of choices in your gemstones. Well, let's get to the, uh, the boring parts out of the way first. And that's what I call the vital statistics about every gem so that you, can, you know what makes that gem unique. So what is the chemical composition? We talked about it, it's iron oxide, and that means it's an iron-based gemstone. That means it's going to be fine wherever iron ore is mined. Uh, the crystal structure of this is called trigonal. Um, the hardness, remember hardness is, if you're new to the channel, we talk about hardness all the time. The most scale of hardness is literally a a scale of what gem will scratch another gem. It goes from one to ten, one being tau, ten being diamonds. This one is five and a half to six and a half on that most scale of hardness. That's going to put that in the same kind of league as like a turquoise, kind of a five and a half to six and a half on the most scale of hardness. Not quite as hard as a, a quartz, which is a seven, but certainly better than some of the others. And it's something that you can definitely wear every single day. The next one we talk about is toughness. Sometimes it's called tenacity. That's the ability for a gem to withstand cracking or chipping. Well, this is 
rated fair on that toughness scale. But it, it, again, don't be afraid. This is still something you can definitely wear every single day. And then we get into something called refractive index. Now the refractive index is the sparkle of that gemstone. Now it's not sparkling like a diamond, but it has a really high lust, luster, a really good reflective surface. Uh, surface. So that's going to be 2.94 to 3.22 on the refractive index. That's pretty good. That's pretty high, actually. Um, and then the specific gravity we, we talked about already. Well, next we're going to get into where do we find this gemstone? Okay, so as we said, where in the world does this hematite come from? Well, first of all, remember, wherever iron ore is mined is where you met, might be able to find the hematite gemstone. So let's look at the world's leading producers, in no particular order, of iron ore, including the hematite and magnetite. And that would be China. Of course, China being a big land mass is going to have a lot of iron ore there somewhere. Uh, Australia, the land down under. We have Brazil and South America. India, the subcontinent of India, also is going to have a lot of iron ore where you can find some magnetite and hematite. Um, Russia and uh, the Ukraine. South Africa, at the very uh, lower part of the continent of Africa. Uh, and the United States. These are the world's leading producers of iron ore, including all of those other gems that you find with it, like the hematite and the magnetite and other ores. And the main production centers in the United States would be in Michigan and in Minnesota. Okay, so those are the places on Earth where you can find the hematite. All right, you guys are quick. You heard me say on Earth. Well, where else can we find it? Well, how about Mars? Yeah, you heard me, Mars. <laughs> um, the spectral signature of hematite was seen on planet Mars by the infrared spectrometer on the NASA Mars Global Surveyor and 2001 Mars Odyssey spacecraft in orbit around Mars. Yeah, they actually found it was an abundance on the planet of Mars. And uh, there are two main sites on the planet. Now, is this possibly an explanation why Elon Musk is, is suddenly so hell-bent on having a mission to Mars? I don't know. It'd be pretty expensive to mine it, pretty expensive to get it back for a gem that doesn't cost that much. Um, but also, it explains a lot because Mars is referred to as the red planet. And even if you look in a telescope at the sky uh, uh, and you look at the planet of Mars, it appears red in the sky and you can see that. And that probably has a lot to do with the fact that there is such an abundance of that hematite on the planet of Mars. And also bringing it closer to home. I think about places like Australia, another big producer. If you've ever been to a desert anywhere, including Australia or the southwest part of the United States, and you've seen a lot of that red clay or the red sand, that's really the result of the iron composition of that sand or that clay. And um, in fact, here's a picture of when, uh, well, I went to the opal mines in Australia and you look where Uluru was, that biggest standing monolith in the world. It's not a mountain, it's just this rock in the middle of nowhere. And it's beautiful red under the sunlight. And as the sun goes down, it starts to turn a little bit purple. Well, that's because of that iron ore. So what is that iron ore doing? When you take a look at this, if you took the hematite and you ground it up into powder and it got wet, it's going to turn red. Well, that became the first really pigment gemstone out there where what that means is that hundreds and hundreds of years ago, they would, they would harvest that red color from that and make paints 
or other you know, pigments, maybe for war paint, things like that, because it was the red. Now, let's talk about where does the name hematite come from? Well, that is an interesting story as well. Hematite comes from a Greek word, hema. H-A-I-M-A is how that is spelled. And that means blood. And it was called blood because they would find specimens of that rich red in there. In fact, when you think of uh, the term hemoglobin, hemoglobin is a name for the red blood cells that are carrying iron throughout your body. Um, so that's how it got the name hematite. Okay, so a couple of more um, interesting facts about hematite. Remember, it's a beautiful gemstone. It doesn't cost a lot of money. It also has a little bit of a heft to it, so you feel like you're wearing something. This is another example of one of Judy's pieces. It's a little more of a, almost look, a faceted look to that hematite, which is beautiful. Uh, another funny thing here. This is, a, <laughs> this is part of her collection, but it wasn't always part of her collection. You see a little bit of the rainbow hematite in there? Judy and I were boating one time and uh, we actually dropped anchor and we slept overnight on our boat. And, um, and uh, you can see, by the way, this has a magnetic closure on this. And we found this when we pulled the anchor up. Uh, this magnet was clinging to our, <laughs> our anchor. So we found this actually at the bottom of the uh, bay in Tampa Bay area. But it's still a, obviously, a, so when I say you can wear this every day, can wear this every day but hematite also has a little bit of a trace of magnetism to it not really really strong but it has a little magnetism because of its iron ore and uh, one of the things that that allowed to do is a way to get more yield uh, in some of the areas I think it was especially in Minnesota there's a big uh, uh, iron ore mine there that's called the Masabi Range. It's an iron district. And hematite is found in the tailings. You know, when they're, when they're mining for anything, they have these big stacks that are tailings. And where you usually find the hematite is in the tailings of iron ore production. Well, they came up with an ingenious way to increase their yield of the hematite gemstone was something called uh, magnetation. So magnetation is uh, creating a slurry of all of the iron ore and of course the hematite and magnetite that's in, in it. And using very powerful magnets, they can separate that hematite and magnetite from the other iron ore. And it, it really makes it much, much more uh, more yield, which of course in turn makes it much more affordable. So I, I really think this is a great gemstone. It's something that all of you should add to your collection. It's not very expensive. I think it's really kind of fun. As I said, a look of a Tahitian pearl at a fraction of the cost. And uh, try it. Let me know what you think of it. Well, thank you so much for tuning in on this weird lesson after happy hour because I had no audio earlier. I hope you enjoyed it. Remember, if you have not done so yet, please hit that subscribe button. It really helps me out. It doesn't cost you a penny, but it allows me to keep doing these videos for free for you. We'll see you next week with another lesson from the Colored Gemstone Academy. Thank you for watching. Wait a minute. That's a field sobriety test. I think I passed.